Some people struggle to find their calling. Brian Bradley knew right from the start. I always wanted to be a, a comic since I was four years old. It's my, first, my very first memory uh, watching I Love Lucy and Dick Van Dyke, and I wanted, I wanted to be that. And that is exactly there? what he became. Step, first of all, you just step over the border. Boom, dam, ba, ding, dam, ba, dong, dong, da, bong, bong, da, ding, ding, bong. What the hell are you saying? Well, I started at the comedy store in Los Angeles doing open mic and improv and uh, just started emceeing and then started getting gigs. I was the king of the callbacks in, in my career. I'd get that close. I'd get, you know, it's between you and the other guy. And the other guy got it. I had numerous series I was up for. And uh, Bruce Willis and I were up for Moonlighting. You're laughing about that. Uh-huh. I think it's funny, you know. I went to the gym, I've started lifting weights, and nothing's happening. <laughs> That's not the laughy part of the joke, all right? I just... It was too ball. weird. It was just, you know, like, you get so close, and your agent's uh, talking about money, and, and he's throwing out these figures, and you're thinking, by Thursday, my life could take a quantum leap. And then it doesn't, and you're performing at the Red Onion in Rancho Cucamonga, and uh, I finally just said, I, why am I putting myself through this? It's not that gratifying. It's, and that's not sour grapes. You know, working in sitcoms is kind of boring and, and it's bad material, it's embarrassing. There really aren't that many. I was on a Seinfeld, that's the only quality show. These others were just drivel. I need more pledge. More pledge? I just bought two cans last week and I don't have any wood in the house. Well, it goes fast. I knew uh, Jerry from the comedy store and uh, he's just a, he is who he is on TV. He's just a nice guy, uh, no pretense. And uh, he once said to me, what I've all, often said, he goes, I just want to make a living doing what I love. And it was that desire that convinced him to take another chance, this time on Broadway in the revival of Greece. Greece was a big left turn for me, yes. And uh, I never, I can't sing and I can't dance. And I wound up in a Broadway, in a Broadway show. <laughs> Where you got rave reviews. Uh, that was met with an icy reception with the cast because uh, it, the review started off just touting me because I did this audience warm-up as Vince Fontaine, and then he goes, Mr. Bradley leaves the stage, and that's when you hear the thud, and the rest of it was a terrible review. So I felt bad for them, because they were tremendously talented singers. Brian's star was on the rise, but he wasn't quite in Broadway's inner circle, especially after unknowingly humiliating himself in the presence of a superstar. And uh, I made the... Uh, big faux pas of extending my hand to Barbara Streisand. You know, this sounds so show busy. Brooke Shields invites me up to her dressing room when Streisand came to see Greece, And uh, she's standing there in this little semicircle, and, and Brooke goes, Brian, this is Barbara Streisand. And I reached my hand out, and all the other people like, went, <gasps> like, oh no, you don't do that. And what's she going to do? She hates touching other people. And uh, <laughs> she reluctantly went, <laughs> you know, touch the, uh, the groundling. When the show finally closed, Brian wasn't sure what to do. After 20 sitcoms and six feature film appearances, he wasn't anxious to go back to L.A. Oh, so like he one. moved back this home to Florida, known. hearing the voices That's of his parents echoing in his mind. You don't get the snappy comics. I do. They once said to me, when I told them I wanted to be a stand-up comic, they said, well, what are you going to do when you're 55? And I said, I'll tell you when I'm 55. <laughs> and now I'm 55. <laughs> what, what would you tell them if they asked I'm you? I'm still a comic, you know, still doing it. And if one day I wind up bagging groceries at Publix, so what? But is there enough work out there for middle-aged comics? Most of the comedians these days are like 20-something. True, but I also have found that funny's funny, you know. And uh, there's a woman, uh, she recently uh, was on uh, America Has Talent, Grandma Lee. 
I got divorced because of religion. He thought he was God. I did not. And I worked with her in a, a weekend room in Fort Myers, and she's in her little Toyota put, puttering around the country, going from gig to gig, and suddenly, boom, she's kind of hit it at 75, 80 years old. You don't find her interesting because that's going to be you one day. Did you? It, you know what? It may be. And that's fine. If I can still find something to be funny about and be working, that bring it on. Uh, I'm very interested in uh, the retirement community circuit. Uh, I've done a number of them. Like that, you know, the boomers are creating these beautiful communities, and they're really active. And they have these little carts with, you know, 57 Chevy fins, and uh, they have beautiful theaters and nice budgets, and they're a great audience. So, I love it. You're scaring the body back to life. In fact, Brian may have stumbled upon something that can keep his career going strong for years. Senior communities are hungry for real talent, and many entertainers still believe working there is beneath them. Red Buttons was doing the retirement community circuit. This is an Oscar-winning actor, you know. You just find a niche. You find, you know, the retirement community, they're very vital people and I don't talk down to them I address them as vital sexual beings which they are they still feel like they're 40 until they look in the mirror or try to stand up but you know they've got brains and and libidos and they're you know they're uh, very interesting people when you engage them you don't have to treat them like little grandmas and grandpas and that's helped them appreciate the little things along the way I've learned stop complaining about your situation, about your money, about the room, about other comedians. It just doesn't serve any purpose other than to feed your little ego. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so if I, can, if I can just focus on acceptance of this is what's happening and, uh, and roll with it, I, I have over the course of time learned that. <laughs> if I could name him, his name would be... Maestro. Maestro. <laughs> he never quite found fame, and he certainly hasn't found fortune, but Hello, Brian John. Bradley Hello. has carved out a fascinating Hello. career and learned to enjoy to its true rewards. The nice part about stand-up comedy and, and it are the surprises you get when people come up to you and say, I haven't laughed in six months. My wife died of cancer, all these terrible things. I've been holed up in my house. My friend dragged me out, and tonight my stomach hurts from laughing. I want to thank you. You know, and it, that was surprisingly gratifying. <laughs> <laughs>